Hello everyone, thanks for joining in. So here goes the penultimate talk for the day in the UX track. So the talk is titled My First Year as a Fedora Packager by David Duncan. Um, and the talk is pre-recorded, so I'm going to share my screen here and also post a link to the talk in chat if you want to view it uh, on a separate browser screen. David is here with us today, so please feel free to post your questions in chat. And um, I'm guessing David would be happy to take it at the end of the session. Hello. Uh, welcome to uh, my talk here at DevConf US 2020. Uh, my name is David Duncan, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, my first year as a Fedora package manager. Now, um, it's the end of my first year, and I still feel like I haven't gotten anything done uh, that really makes me feel like I've become more advanced. Um, I'm perfectly willing to try packaging on pretty much anything that you bring to me and to do the work that's necessary to get the help that I need. Um, and when I decided to do this, I was at uh, Fedora Flock in Budapest and I was uh, talking with some of the people there and, and uh, was super excited about uh, the idea of getting more involved with uh, Fedora and the Fedora engineering side specifically so that I could, um, uh, one, grow my skills and two, um, be a beneficial um, member of the Fedora community uh, outside of just being a, a, you know, an evangelist and letting people know that I was excited to have uh, Fedora on my own desktop and my own cloud systems. So what did I sign up for? I was talking to Kevin Fenzi, and Kevin said that he had uh, rolled his own version of the AWS CLI package, and uh, he, well, it, it was derivative of someone else's, but, but he was working on it, and, and it, was, it was something that he was keeping up uh, updated so that he could use it. And he said that uh, he'd really like to have some, you know, like to have it off his plate. And uh, this, my ears pricked up because I work at Amazon, and and uh, I said, you know, this this would be great. I I have uh, other um, uh, high visibility requirements around leveraging the AWS CLI in uh, the fencing agent, and uh, would love to, um, you know, to to bring that into into line. And so I was envisioning this this space where I'd already had a lot of the groundwork laid by a uh, by a senior member of the engineering staff, and um, and would be able to uh, sort of guide this through in um, in our uh, in this in the process and learn a lot more about packaging. Mm -hmm. um, super excited about packaging, and that was a that was something that was a big deal. So, um, so with Kevin's help, uh, I set out to become the the packager for uh, AWS CLI. Um, now, this is my first package, and so I looked at it, and I thought this is something I depend on, um, and uh, it's something that I that is a, an important part of my daily work schedule. So it's, uh, it's something I felt like I could I could really uh, get a much better understanding of very quickly. I wouldn't have to worry about too much about um, what like what I had to do or what, how this how how it worked or where the um, uh, where the developers sat because I know that they sat sort of in the same company that I was sitting in and, and that we would be able to um, have a, a close communication or I'd be able to, you know, reach out and bend their ear and in uh, short order. Um, but what I didn't realize when, you know, when Kevin handed this over, he said, oh, yeah, this is kind of in lockstep with the Boto Core, and so I should probably just give that to you too. So one package became two packages because you couldn't update the AWS CLI without also updating uh, the Boto Core package that it depended upon. So now I had two packages that uh, that I was I was working with, and um, and that was a great place to start. I felt like I had this this uh, kind of understanding of 
of um, how the overall I was, you know, had sort of a, a microcosm of the ecosystem where everything fits together and we, we understand each other. So here I have this very simple sort of controlled environment, and I thought that was super exciting. So getting started, um, the first thing that uh, was important was finding a sponsor. Uh, you can't just jump on the pa the packaging mailing list and and say, hey, I'm just gonna I'm I'm just gonna package this guy. Okay, um, you you uh, you need to make sure that everybody understands that you're um, you're interested in packaging and you want to be a part of the part of the Fedora community that's doing that work and. Um, and uh, they will provide you a, someone. Someone in the in the devil world will will uh, um, sponsor you for your um, for your participation. And um, usually, that's someone who's interested in helping you to get a little bit better at what you're doing. Um, so that's so they become. And I would encourage you, as someone who's looking into packaging or thinking about packaging. To think about this as uh, as someone who's an important member of your team, your your goals, your responsibilities, are uh, something that they're they're saying that they will uh, take some degree of responsibility for. I mean, not not in a in a way that you know any of us are in super trouble, but in a way that makes sure that we we are getting what we need to um, to get our work done. And so that means someone who can uh, can really help you. Um, so choose carefully. Um, in my case, I did, I feel like I did choose carefully. I had someone who was encouraging and part of the Fedora engineering team and, and had been doing this for uh, a number of years, uh, but also was successful beyond the years that he was, that he had been packaging. So it was a, an opportunity for me to learn from someone who, um, really grokked a lot of the the component parts in ways that uh, helped to build a bigger understanding of the ecosystem. And then, so, you know, you'll learn a lot. You'll be amazed at what, what tools are available to you. Uh, you'll see some of the things that, you know, that sort of behind the curtain in ways that you, know, you didn't see before. Uh, how the builds are done and how your how the reporting tools uh, talk back to you. Um, but then at a certain point, you know, the focus comes off of your sponsor and your sponsor kind of leaves you um, to grow on your own. And that's that's an important part of the growth period. I'm not saying that they're just just abandoning you, but but to say that they're giving you an opportunity to to seek out and and uh, apply understanding as you as you see fit. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to engage with the um, with the community overall. And I encourage you to be transparent about what your abilities are, because there are lots of people out there in, in the community who are willing to help you. And um, and I think that it's important that that uh, we as members of this community go on helping each other to be at our most vulnerable and to learn as much as we possibly can in as safe an environment as we can create. So I'm challenging you to uh, be a part of that and make yourself, uh, you know, extend yourself out to the edge of your understanding. So, yeah, the first experiences that I had around packaging happened in in uh, a rapid fashion. I was not expecting to take on one. Well, I wasn't expecting to take on two packages, but when I did, I thought, yeah, that'll be good. I, I'll get a, a gain a, a better understanding of the ecosystem. And uh, two, that that meant that uh, I I would be able to take this opportunity to um, to understand more about uh, that microcosm that I that I was uh, participating in. Um, and so uh, very fast, very quickly, the my chosen applications were uh, starting to reach out into other requirements, right? And uh, so I looked to the documentation, uh, specifically the packaging guidelines that I found I found to be absolutely a necessity in building my uh, experience and understanding around 
um, making sure that I was doing this in a way that was going to be accepted by the Fedora community. I had already been accepted by the Fedora community. Um, but the software that I was working with had a deeper reach than I really understood. And there were a lot of other packages, a lot of other uh, components that were dependent upon some of the internal requirements that I had. So Bodocore um, was uh, necessary for the for the AWS CLI, but then the AWS CLI was also necessary for uh, some other components like um, the AWS shell. And we had there was another gentleman who was who was packaging the um, the AWS shell, and uh, and he had specific requirements. Um, and now I was starting to see that I had some uh, downstream collaboration requirements here and. Uh, needed to really understand better the uh, collaborative requirements that I had um, to find those associated uh, software um, packaging requirements and to ensure that I was not only providing what I needed for um, for making sure that the AWS CLI was fully functional, but also the, the dependent projects were capable of taking those changes without having any kind of uh, adverse effect. And this led to me getting uh, a lot more familiar with the downstream process, but then kind of behind the scenes, there was uh, more going on. Like I said, there was a, there were some go-to-market strategies around the, um, the fencing agents uh, for high availability that were being integrated into um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So the AWS CLI was starting to grow in its um, in its enterprise uh, uh, level uh, or enterprise Linux level um, integration behind the scenes and uh, and so I was listening to um, I was listening to the sort of the heartbeat downstream uh, from where I was but then upstream there were these other things that were happening that were uh, more specific enterprise goals that needed to be paid attention to. And one of the things that I realized early on was that I didn't have a uh, I didn't have the ability to just blanket um, build these packages in a simple fashion. And when I started asking around about automation and processes for automation, the answers that I got, the responses I I received back from other packagers, other people who were doing work, was that they had their own bespoke process for. Uh, tooling to ensure that their packaging pipelines were successful. And that meant that they injected specific types of manual uh, uh, process in where they needed to, but they didn't necessarily have um, they didn't necessarily have a process that fit into a neatly uh, bundled uh, stack that they could then hand over in a way that made a pack another packager capable of more successful uh, um, configuration. So uh, a lot of a lot of time and effort went into building these packages in a manual way early on, and building that tooling out uh, took time. Uh, took me a lot of time because this is when this was not somewhere where I had a, a tremendous amount of of uh, deep deep dive experience, um, but I was willing to learn, and I was super excited about that. Um, and this was a uh, this is a a picture that uh, frightened me right off with the AWS CLI. So if you know anything about the uh, the way that uh, the Amazon teams do development, they really love to to land sort of tip of the spear, which is great when you're um, uh, when you're running something that has a, a very short life cycle. But for things that have long long term uh, life cycles, like Red Hat Enterprise Linux and uh, and the and the the multitude of versions of Fedora that may be available, and same with the, you know, with being able to support uh, the CentOS packaging in the in the in the long term. Uh, you're required to kind of create this, uh, you know, this uh, branching process for each one of those within the context of the 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 diskit server, and and so diskit became something that was really important and a and a and a big part of the um, uh, the 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 practice. So um, so now, 
as as I'm finding more and more responsibility for what's upstream and what's down and what's downstream, I'm starting to feel like uh, I have a responsibility to do something that had been entirely different before. So when I first started uh, working on this package and uh, the AWS CLI, one of the things that was uh, that was necessary was that it be available, but it didn't necessarily have to have any kind of static um, existence in a specific diskit branch. Uh, so for Fedora 30 or 29 or whatever, I didn't have a, uh, a rawhide. I didn't have anything besides the build for rawhide because there wasn't any requirement to really reach out and do significant amounts of testing. It just needed to be available so that you could, you could use it in the standard systems. But now with, um, with, uh, ha with a, with a requirement to have uh, full support for, um, for the longevity of a, uh, of a, of a Red Hat release, things became a little bit more difficult and there, I started to get more feedback uh, on the process and to hear more about what was required. Um, so uh, in learning about how to build these packages, um, there's a large amount of documentation. I feel like this is out of order. Uh, there's a large amount of documentation that needs to be, it needs to be consumed, right? Like, so once you're kind of left to your own devices by your sponsor, you're, 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 you spend a lot of time reading and and uh, concerning yourself with how these things uh, work. So um, I I spent a lot of time reading the documentation around RPM and uh, around different tools in the Fedora infrastructure. And what I found was that many of them were either retired or they were task specific or a lot of the a lot of the details had been had been uh, related from one sponsor to a sponsee and in a, in a way that uh, was very specifically help beneficial for what, for what they were working on at the time. But it didn't necessarily translate into something that was a, uh, um, an overarching um, mandate. So a lot of the protocol, a lot of the, the decision process became this sort of um, a living document for how how um, uh, you interact with the pro with the other developers, the other packages, the uh, the build systems, all of that had some metrics, some reporting, a lot of uh, a lot of feedback, but there wasn't a whole lot of um, there wasn't a whole lot of guidelines for how that how it's supposed to work. So I'd recommend if you're if you're doing this work that you spend a lot of time looking through the RPMs that are available within the distribution, and looking at uh, sort of you know looking at the source upstream, but then translating that back into how it relates in, in the um, in the package maintenance for longer term support. What are we doing in Apple to make sure that this is this continues to be available and that we're fi we're fixing bugs? What does it mean to do to have a package that is in Fedora and uh, has a has a a division of the the versions and yet has some consistency in the operations? How do I get that and what does that look like? Um, there's a there are lots of those questions that are more difficult to answer than you might think. Um, especially if you're not a strong developer in the languages that are important, that are uh, sort of core to the to the packaging itself, and you're more uh, looking at the operations and trying to apply uh, with help what needs to be done. Uh, there's a so so obviously when you're doing that, uh, you're looking for your that collaborative effort, and you're you're working on those, you're working on building up that body of knowledge. You have to you. You have to go somewhere to find out why things are the way they are when you don't have a clear picture um, from just a you know one or two line change log. Um, you again, this this is a very welcoming, very very inclusive community, and it will continue to be that way. And so I want to encourage you, as someone who is learning, um, to put a lot of effort into into making sure that people have a good understanding of of uh, where where you're falling short and how they might be able to help you move forward in that direction. A lot of times there there might be some, you know, there might be some big gaps and, and you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to start in an area where 
uh, the gaps are 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 small. You just have to start, and then from there, uh, your commitment, your experience, and the direction that you take as a result of that may not be in the direction that you originally thought. Um, but eventually, you'll take on the responsible. You know, you'll take on responsibilities in in a way that is um, that is consistent with what your commitment is. And I encourage that. Don't don't think that you have to suddenly become uh, king of the hill. Um, so there's lots of places where the feedback comes from. And uh, first, firstly, there's Bugzilla, and this is somewhere where I was most uh, familiar with interacting with the engineers who were working on packages. Was in the place where you file a file an issue and. Uh, they return a response and request more assistance with uh, stimulating failure or creating the exact uh, um, uh, complication in uh, in a controlled way so that they can help you know they can help to identify how to fix that and now here it is your turn to be the person who is asking for that so you can look for those consumer concerns ask for those reproducers or build the reproducers yourself in ways that are um, that are beneficial to you and uh, to your um, to your audience, um, and then uh, the new hotness will will is a is a uh, an alert system that is built around uh, monitoring the upstream communi uh, the upstream uh, tags and and um, and repositories uh, with or the tags in those repositories um, to find find out where you are in terms of uh, the latest version and how uh, how you're building that you know gives you an opportunity to to have an associated uh, build process. Now, um, one of the great things about all of the uh, of, of Bugzilla is that a lot of the build system uh, and the tags that uh, that you use in the change logs and whatnot are capable of, of um, executing. Uh, tasks or, or stimulating tasks in the in the build system to provide more detail uh, around the um, around the state of a specific uh, associated bug so like the new hotness will file a bug saying you've got version 1.18.2 and then you can create a change uh, a change set that is associated with that bug and a change log that has the the bug identifier in it and then you can build that in the build system, which will then tag that system to, to or tag that ticket to identify that the bug has changed state. Um, and once you have that changed state, you uh, you can you know it'll change state to on QA. And then uh, once you have enough karma to release that package into uh, support, then the uh, the the bug will uh, be uh, kicked over to the um, to completed, so uh, those are some great. That's a that's a great kind of automation that's available to you, and I want to make sure that you know that that's out there and and uh, possible for you to take advantage of. Another thing that's uh, that's great is the automatic bug reporting tool, and that files automatically on behalf of consumers who submit those crashes, so that they can uh, they can provide better and better detail around uh, around your. Um, uh, your problems and that aggregates really well um, into uh, into sort of a, a a base metric to tell you where you you need to focus your energy. Um, lots of things go wrong when you start to try and and uh, target specific versions, specific releases um, in this in that in this crazy diskit world. And uh, this is an opportunity for you to get some strong constructive feedback very quickly. Um, and then uh, my favorite Fordham of guidance uh, and early on came from uh, a couple members of the community and one particular I think is a great leader in this approach is is uh, Justin, uh, Justin Flory. And Justin is uh, obviously a council member for Fedora and, and he's uh, someone that I think has been in this community for a long time and, and built up a, a, a strong concern and a strong governance around uh, code of conduct and uh, making sure that this is a place where we can all t participate without being clobbered, um, because there are various uh, skill 
skill levels here and and it is important that we think about you know we consider those skill levels when we look at how it is that we interact with the uh, program and then there's the proven packager so um it's some of the reason i talk about that, that sense of tolerance the sense of outreach and that that uh, concept of having a pull request associated with something. So early on in, in my uh, experience around the um, uh, around building packages, um, I made some basic mistakes, and one of those mistakes was was uh, um, the way that I had formatted a specific date um, in in the uh, change log. Well, it was a mistake, and it needed to be corrected. It needed to be corrected over over a series of of the change log um, entries. And one of the proven packagers took the package and uh, reworked the the information that I had uh, incorrectly put together, and then uh, and then uh, submitted it. Then pinged me in uh, IRC and let me know what I had done. I went back to my sponsor. And we talked about. And then he showed me a couple of things that I was that I was missing about uh, some tools. One of those being our spec, and so some automation was born around that. And uh, I, you know, that really led me to a great uh, experience. But like I said, in the you know in the early part of this conversation, there were other things that were going on too. Um, I'd gotten some Bugzilla reports from uh, from downstream use right like the people like um one of the, the member who was uh who was packaging aws shell um basically moved on to uh oh, well came to me after he had determined that i was moving a little bit faster than than was was possible for the for the shell team it turned out they'd stopped most of their development so it wasn't um wasn't surprised but he had uh, some specific requirements around the version of PyAML, I think, and and uh, that that requirement was that uh, that it be uh, that we loosen the constraints that the AWS CLI upstream team had placed on their their packaging. So uh, he submitted a he had submitted a a, a pull request to. With a patch to relax those dependencies in the uh, in the requirements uh, configuration for the um, uh, for the um, PyPy package, and that made it possible for me to apply the patch, relax the dependencies, and then make the Python build using the standard setup tools uh, in the in the Python um, build, uh, and then he could use it. And then, of course, that set off a chain reaction because one of the reasons that they had constrained this particular package was because it caused an, an issue in the documentation. So customers who are consumers who were using um, the AWS CLI and then relying on the um, the use of Groff in their um, in reading the documentation were disappointed because now they could use the AWS shell, but they couldn't read the documentation. Um, and uh, that made it very difficult for other people. So there was a lot of a lot of conversation around that. And um, and uh, we made some modifications. But meanwhile, um, the uh, rail engineering team took up uh, access or took up the support of the Bodo 3 in um, in rel and uh, as a result they were dependent upon the version of Bodocore. and uh, this did not trickle down to me uh, after I mean it didn't trickle down to me while it was in in test and uh, um, one and then of course they filed a ticket to close off the um, the access to Apple, and um, when I looked in the Apple, I remember looking in the Apple package and finding a uh, a change in the in the way that the package was identified, and um, and the the uh, diskit branch was closed, and um, and I didn't really understand why, but I talked to Kevin about it, and and uh, we had a nice chat saying, okay, yeah, there was a a, 
a, a, a bug filed by the Red Hat team, and they were they're planning on having this as a a part of the standard rail, so it doesn't need to be in the extra packages any longer. It will be in the standards, uh, the source source RPMs uh, that it's that it ships with. So uh, this was a great experience. But then um, I found that you know, of course, I was continuing to build in the way that I was, and I had uh, built out some tools, and now I was getting a little faster at, at doing the process. But there were a lot of things I think. Well, I'm sure that there were a lot of things missing in what I was doing because um, because one of the proven packagers uh, made a decision to uh, to execute on rebuilding the AWS CLI and rebuilding the uh, the Boto Core together uh, along with Boto three, and so uh, all three of these packages were um, being consumed in in Rail engineering. And there was a tighter coupling of the process that was uh, that had that had started to take place in terms of their ingestion. So they wanted um, they really wanted. Uh, it's very clear to me that although I've never talked to them about it, it's very clear to me that the um, that uh, what they were looking for was a consistency that I was not providing in the way that I was do doing the general packaging. So. Um, so I, I found one day that the build system uh, reported back to me that um, one of their builds was was completed. And in, in doing so, um, I found myself looking at a package that didn't look, or the, uh, looking at a spec file that didn't look like the ones that I had been creating. It was much more, you know, it had had a, a, a level of sophistication that I wasn't, um, was it yet capable of? And so I was looking, looking at it, and I was interested. And so I was like, well, "What are you, you know, what are you doing on the, what are you doing on my package? I can't believe you're working on my package." You know, was sort of what I was thinking immediately. And then when I looked at, it, I started looking at the package, and I thought, I thought, "Oh wow, that's, uh, oh that's smart. Yeah. Oh, I would have never known to ingest that specific patch to fix this specific bug." Uh, the way you did this here, this is interesting, and it comes directly from the upstream, and it looks like you have a one-to-one -one match, and there's a seems like a close communication. Wow, yeah, I could really learn a lot here from from watching how this works. And so, you know, a lot of that effort on my education around building these packages started to and and being sort of closely connected to these these packages um, was starting to. Uh, dissolve into this um, passive relationship with uh, the work that was being done around the packages that I felt responsible for, but seemed to be, um, but seemed to be watching as other people more senior than myself started to push real, ch you know, interesting changes into and and making making headway. So. Um, so I felt like that was the right answer in the, under those circumstances was for me to to kind of accept all this help and and to see it and I hope that you know in in the same experience you would feel the same way that that or you know I think I think this is a a, a positive experience right in in the sense that that at first I thought that maybe I was missing something in my and they were they were missing something in in my guidance, and then I realized that there was a long way away there was a long way in between our the body of knowledge that they had in terms of packaging and my body of knowledge for packaging, and then it might be very difficult for them to spend a lot of time trying to push this through for me when they had goals and deadlines that were associated with go to market strategies far beyond what it was that I was trying to do in you know in the in the context of of um, the 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 community experience so um, but but still all of the work that they were doing was still being reported back to me so I, I was able to you know still able even today I'm still able to to man maintain and manage the 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 reporting and ensure that if there are corrections that need to be taken that I'm taking those if I uh, you know, if I need to make uh, modifications to the package itself um, to ensure that things are happening, like suppression of the V1 information uh, versus V2, I can I can do that. And they also can take what I've done and remove the parts that are offending, right? That are not passing the quality control, and they can 
uh, they can rebuild those packages so that they're in they're consistent with the requirements that they have for upstream qual for downstream quality. So uh, this is an interesting question now, right? Because now I've got I've got uh, sort of a looking glass into these two packages that I, that I started with at the beginning of the year, and I was super excited about uh, dealing with them right in, in the in the uh, in that that first section. My sponsor, you know, has been sort of uh, off, but then now I have many more. I mean, there's many more people that I talk to on a on a daily basis. It doesn't there's not one person who needs to be responsible for my efforts on a on uh, on any given day. Um, but I'm still looking in on the packages that that I, uh, you know, I originally felt like I was responsible for, and and I'm not seeing uh, the the work be done. So um, guidance and governance started to become something that I did have kind of a a, a sense of, and the AWS CLI was a perfect uh, a perfect spot, right? So so what was going on was we were we were working on the AWS CLI version one and version two came out. Well, version two was uh, exclusive from version one. So there's there, there were some component parts that were shared uh, in terms of the, um, the abstract components, but then the version two itself uh, provided for uh, a lot more flexibility in terms of the, uh, of the build process for the participants uh, within the context of of the greater AWS ecosystem, and what I mean by that is that uh, it was no longer in PyPy, so this version two was no longer available to customers uh, in a way that was uh, consumable. So I turned my efforts there, and then started to make uh, a lot of those uh, those that effort that I had pushed into. Um, building relationships with the upstream community and the upstream uh, uh, maintainers towards helping them to make decisions about how they were going to uh, build out their open source program and make this uh, possible to have a better developer experience um, for their customers and uh, and consumers. I mean, in this sense, we are, we as Fedora are a strong consumer of the uh, um, of the um, uh the the package itself right so or or the the application itself and so we want to package it in a way that is consistent with the distribution experience mm -hmm. but if it's not open source or if the component parts are not open source then suddenly we're just doing the framework and the plugins don't really matter because they they don't come from somewhere independent they were coming from a single source um so it can't separate out separate it out into what's open source and what's Closed um, when they're when uh, systems are being delivered in both binary format and non-binary format and just-in-time compile format. Um, so, trying to work on that availability became a, a big focus. I stood, and you know there was a little bit of a struggle there too. I mean, I was looking for other packages and I just kind of reached out in different directions and tried to figure out if I could do things that were mildly interesting and as uh, and and related to the environment that I was most closely uh, supporting, which is the Amazon uh, EC2 environment and the other other uh, utilities. And yeah, I still own these two packages, but that maintenance is an ongoing problem for people who are more directly involved in the in the in the day to day maintenance of the of the uh, rel engineering. Um, and so now I'm building my relationship with the next generation tooling uh, groups and hoping to uh, create a scenario in which we can better uh, we can better um, uh, consume those into the uh, into the Fedora distribution. Uh, if you're not a package maintainer now, and I thought I'm I fully intended to to write this in a way that was um, encouraging for people who aren't package maintainers. Uh, start with this wiki and and walk through what's going on in the wiki, but don't make it necessary for you to understand every inch, every component part, every skill, every exception uh, that's listed and, and sort of detailed there. Just jump in. Let's get started. Let's have some conversations. Um, if you feel like there are people who are 
uh, way more advanced who seem to think that there's a lot more ground that you need to cover. There are people like me out there who are intermediate and can help uh, more, you know, along those lines. I'm more likely to be on uh, IRC than I am to reply back to the appropriate devil list. Um, so I would say reach out in both directions, depending on where where it is that you're, you know, that you're, um, uh, that you're most comfortable. And then wherever it is that you're most comfortable, make sure you reply uh, so that you're replying in an appropriate manner uh, so that uh, so that you can take part in that. And then the other thing is as an upstream contributor, you have, uh, there's a lot of things that are being done in terms of the packaging that we want to make sure have an upstream first kind of ex uh, goal. And that upstream first goal means taking the testing frameworks that are that are necessary for ensuring that the packages are fully functional and getting those into the uh, the systems uh, for the for the application itself so that you can see that in terms of code coverage and you can verify that those uh, switches and the appropriate parts that are there for uh, supporting the distributions that are supported um, are there in the package in the upstream application itself, not just somewhere down below with no concerns over over how that affects the, the overall uh, deployments. So um, I think, yeah, that's the that's my advice on getting started. And and I'll just want to say thank you for coming to the talk and thank you for being here at DevConf. I think this is um, one of the greatest experiences that that I have had is being at DevConf. And I miss the camaraderie and the hallway discussions and the ability to have that uh, close interaction. But uh, I'm grateful for uh, the hop in um, uh, experience and and uh, this makes things super uh super easy for us to enjoy some time together. So I'm really grateful that you're all here and uh, glad glad to talk to you about anything uh, that is interesting to you about packaging or uh, about getting involved in Fedora and just in general, uh, even if it's just to become an ambassador and, and to talk about, uh, talk about Fedora in a way that is consistent. I think that's very important. Thank you so much, David, for that amazing talk. And I think uh, what you said at the end totally resonates with how we are all feeling right now. So thank you for being there virtually with us. Um, we really appreciate it. OK, did that work? Yes, that totally worked. can hear you now. Yeah, did anybody have any other questions? It's definitely time now. I, it, I don't think it was very difficult. In fact, just asking on the uh, just asking on the mailing list, you'll find somebody who's willing. But I I think it's important to find someone that you enjoy working with, right? And that was something that I thought was was difficult was finding the right person and the right balance of of not being too annoying to someone and and just because of general familiarity uh but then them having the same you know like a, a an ability to help you um bootstrap and it really is right you, you don't want to be you don't want to make someone responsible for your uh you know for your learning experience for the rest of their lives ben i would pick the the documentation it's really difficult to figure out what what tools really exist and what tools don't exist <laughs> that totally makes sense cool thanks so much i everybody. think ben has a question on the chat um if you could fix one thing about the process what would you fix yeah documentation yeah right mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, documentation is engineering, so I I fully take responsibility for that. So, pound action, dav, dav dunk will. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody. Right. Thanks so much, David.
I will also Thank post you. a la uh, link to the breakout room if anybody wants to continue the conversation with David. Right on. Thanks. Thank you.